Hey everybody, today we're going to talk about using your histogram to make sure that you get your exposure correct every single time. Now one of the most important aspects of photography or videography is getting your exposure correct. If your exposure is not correct, you have less latitude to edit your images and really make them pop. The better that exposure is, the better your final image is going to be. So how do we make sure that our exposure is correct? Well, the number one tool that any photographer or videographer is going to have is going to be their histogram. A uh, histogram is simply a chart showing basically the image and where the dark spots, light spots, and midtones are. And if we get that dialed in properly, we're going to make sure we have a good exposure. So looking at this histogram here, we can see that the main part of the exposure is off to the left hand side. So it's in the dark areas. And sure enough, we have a dark image. On the next image, we have the histogram way over to the right, causing an overexposed image. Now, if we look at this one where the histogram is in the middle, we have a very good exposed image. Now, that is what I would recommend to get started. Put that middle ground, that mid-tones, as close to the center as possible. You're going to make sure that you get a good image. Now, a little more advanced technique is what we call shooting to the right. So, we want that main exposure peak just to be offset to the right a little bit, but we don't want to get all the way up against the right hand side because then we'll start losing detail in the highlights. If we're all the way to the left and we have a line right up against the left hand side, we've lost detail in the shadows. So we want to go to the right without going all the way to the right edge. Now that's going to ensure that we have the most detail to work with. Now, on some of the machines that are running D-Log, the Inspire 2, the Phantom 4 Pro, the Mavic Pro, once you go into D-Log setting in your video, it's going to lock your ISO. So now we have very little room to move because if our ISO is locked, the only thing we have is shutter speed. Now, for stills, that's fine. We increase the shutter speed, no problem. But when we're shooting video, exposure is going to be critical and with a 500 ISO on the Phantom 4 Pro and the, the Mavic Air, this means we have a very bright image and cranking up the shutter speed is only going to make things worse because then we're getting away from what we call the 180 degree rule. Now what that says is you take your frame rate and double it and that's your shutter speed. So if I'm shooting at 1 30th of a second, my shutter speed should be 1 60th of a second. If I'm shooting at 120 frames per second, my frame rate or my shutter speed should be 1 to 40th of a second. Well, again, on a bright day, that may not always give you the room that you want. If you're seeing shutter speeds that are over a thousand, you know, 1 1,000th one of a second, you're going to get jerky looking pay playback. That's where you're going to need a set of ND filters. Now, I've got one here on this Mavic Air. Works great. Now, for a more detailed explanation of, of neutral density filters, when to use them, how to use them, and when not to use them, I've got a link right above me here that is going to explain much more in detail what an ND filter is. And down below, I'll have a link to that video as well. Be sure and watch that so you understand what neutral density filters are for and when to use them. Now, how do we get to the histogram and turn it on in the Go app? We go into the camera settings, go to the tool icon there, scroll up, find the histogram and turn it on. And now we have the histogram sitting on the screen. You can actually drag it around so that it's not covering other things. And that's going to make sure that you get your exposure right. So again, this is very, very important as you get into more advanced photography and videography. You gotta make sure that you nail that exposure 
without messing up the other settings such as ISO and shutter speed and making sure those are right where you want them. So again, link up above real quick using ND filters, what they're for, when to use them, when not to use them. Learn how your Instagram or your histogram works. Learn, you should learn Instagram too, but learn how your histogram works and make sure you get that proper exposure. Now also, if you look at the top of the screen here, you have your camera settings, your ISO, your shutter speed, and on cameras that support it, your aperture, and an EV value. So if you're not quite sure what your histogram is telling you, look at that EV value and adjust that to where it's plus five, plus one. I don't really like going into plus two unless the situation really calls for it, but generally shooting plus one is really gonna give me the most latitude and preserve the most details in my images and allow for the most latitude in post-production. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, like down there in the bottom, share it with your friends so they all understand what this stuff is all about. Hit that subscribe button so that you're part of our subscription team. And if you wanna be notified every time we put out a new video, be sure and click that little bell icon next to the subscribe button to make sure that you're notified every time we put out a new video. This has been Kerry. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.